Hello and welcome back to another episode of Home Bar Basics. This is episode two. I did say we'd be going on all about ice in this video. And as you can see, I've not got any ice in front of me. That's because we're not doing ice. What we are doing though is bottles. Specifically 12 bottles that you all need, in my opinion, when you're starting your home bar. This will differ between bartenders. It'll differ between home bartenders too, depending on your tastes. If you like rum, you might lean more rum. If you like whiskey, you might get more bottles of whiskey. This is my opinion on how I'd build a 12 bottle bar. And in front of you are things that may be essential. Um, I'll give you a clue. One of these is essential. No prizes for guessing which one that is. Into the episode. The first bottle is one that, honestly, I don't stock too much of. We're going with vodka. It may be slightly controversial to say, but I don't think this is too essential in the bar. Out of the 12 bottles that we're going to be talking about today, this is the one I'd use the least. It's essential, but it's not one that you're going to use every day. Cocktails such as the Espresso Martini, the Cosmopolitan, they will call for vodka, uh, and sometimes various types, whether it be a, a citrus vodka or whether it be um, a vanilla vodka, uh, even a Ponce Martini will call for that. I suppose if you're starting out, it is good to have. In terms of brands, here is a bottle of relatively local here in the UK vodka from uh, Ramsbury, who do a brilliant gin, uh, much better than the vodka if I do say so myself. Would I recommend you go out and buy a 40, 50 pound bottle of vodka? Um, no, that would be absolutely ridiculous. Vodka is vodka. I'm yet to find one with amazing flavor notes. Maybe I'm just uninitiated and I don't really understand what I'm talking about, but I doubt it. Vodka is just, it's gin when you've got rid of the juniper. It's just plain old vodka, isn't it? I suppose you've got to have it. Feel free to get a bottle of Ramsbury if you want. Feel free to use Absolute, feel free to use Tito's if you're in America, Cal One is a good shout. But yeah, grab a bottle of vodka and you'll be fine. Much more important is the next bottle. What I like to call juniper infused vodka is gin. Gin is an essential part of the bar. This is one of my favorite gins. Really citrusy, really fresh, really light. Tanqueray 10 is Tanqueray's elite premium gin. It's delicious and it works in so many great classic cocktails. From the stirred drinks like the Negroni, all the way to a shaken, herbaceous cocktail in the south side. It's absolutely delicious. Gin is an essential part of any bar. Regardless of whether you're more into your dark spirit or light, please, please, please stop a bottle of good gin. You can make some brilliant gin sours, such as the Clover Club, Corp Provider. You can even go into the last word if you fancy picking up a little bottle of chartreuse. I won't blame you either. Gin is definitely essential. Tanqueray 10 is great, but you don't need Tanqueray 10. You could easily go and get a bottle of number three. You could get a bottle of Beef Eater, which is a great workhorse spirit. Yeah, any bottle of gin that's got a nice heavy juniper content will work great. Even some more earthy ones like Roku, fantastic products and really good. Definitely an essential for the bar. The next one we're going to be talking about is one that I'm just as passionate about as the gin. So I'll go and grab it. This here is a bottle of Patron Tequila. This is the Blanco. Tequila is a must in the bar. I wasn't a huge fan of tequila a few years ago, and it has grown on me quite a lot. Patron, I'll be honest, it isn't the best tequila on the market. There's many more artisanal tequilas you can buy, but if you're just making cocktails, there's not much better, I'll be honest, because it's got the typical tequila taste, that earthiness, that vegetal note, that works really well in a Oaxaca Old Fashioned, a Paloma, and even your, your classic margs. Tequila, in my opinion, is a must-have in the bar. You don't need an Yeko, you don't need Reposado. A Blanco tequila will work absolutely fine, especially when just shaking cocktails. An ideal one to have when you're building a bar. Good lineup to start, but I think it's time we get into something a bit more funky. This is the last of the lighter spirits that we're gonna be showcasing initially. If you're in America, this is a Cuban product. You may not know what this looks like, seeing as though you're banned from buying them, you naughty, naughty people. But if you're in Canada or anywhere else for that matter, Havana Club 3, Cuban, Spanish style, lightly aged rum, is an essential part of the bar. Out of the three bottles in front of you, this would trump them all for me. I'd go as far as saying, if I only had one bottle for the rest of my life, this is the bottle I'd pick. Havana 3 has got all of the light freshness you'd expect from a Spanish style column rub. It's delicious. You've got a 
pure citrus freshness from it. It's less funky than some of the options we'll talk about next, but this is a must. If you want a good daiquiri, you use this. If you want a Cuba Libre, you use this. If you want a mojito, you use this. This is essential for the bar. And if you can't pick up a Cuban bottle of rum, because for whatever reason, your country has fell out with an entire country again, there's some other options. Always look for Spanish style though, and lightly aged. Uh, Flor de Cana is a great choice. There's a few others on the market. A good way of differentiating between the Spanish style and the, the English style of rum is looking for Ron. Anytime it says Ron, R-O-N, it's gonna be Spanish style. So look for that. Grab a bottle of Havana 3 and make sure you use it. We have been playing a little bit on the light side to start with, but now we're into the dark side. I love rum. This is why in my 12 bottles, I am gonna have three different bottles of rum. Rum for me is the go-to spirit whenever I'm crafting some fun, funky cocktails. And to make a funky cocktail, you need a rum that's got a little bit of funk. When we talk about funk with rum, what do we actually mean? A lot of the time it's this fermented fruit taste, but what you're actually tasting is the ester content in the rum. High esters, high funk. Jamaican rum, made in the English style, or in this case blended, is a blend between pot still and column still rum, like you see in Havana 3. The pot still has all the funk. This blended rum is ideal for cocktails. If I had 13 bottles to choose from, I'd probably pick column, blended, and pot still, and go for something like uh, Smith & Cross, which is a brilliant pot still rum, but blended works for all manner of drinks, whether it be a Mai Tai, a Zombie, any of those deep, dark, tiki drinks that call for rum, you're gonna want a nice blended or pot still rum. Appleton, anything in their range is great, but you can't go wrong with Appleton 8. I said I wanted three bottles of rum, and do you know what, I'm not a liar. Except for when I said that I'd be doing ice this video, I was lying then. This is the plantation, which we're not allowed to say anymore, obviously, because they were very naughty boys back in the day. What we've now got to call them is Plantaray. So this is Plantaray OFTD, Old Fashioned Traditional Dark. This is a great example of a rich, hot, overproof rum. This bottled at 69% adds so much depth to your cocktails. If you want hairs on your chest, use it as a base, but if you don't, Split it with this, 15ml of this with 45ml of the Appleton 8 will give you this just delectable richness and demerara sweetness in your drinks. It is delicious. If you can't get your hands on Plantation slash Plantaray, Lemon Heart 151 is brilliant. Just look for those 151 rums. That's going to mean it's bottled at normally 75%, 75.5%. In this case, it's, it's slightly less than that, but forgive me, it's a delicious rum. I don't really care what you think. On to the next one. This wild little number is Wild Turkey 101. 101 meaning the proof. Proof is just double the ABV for anyone who doesn't know. So that means this is now 50.5% ABV. 101 proof. It's going to have a lot of heat. It's going to be really flavoursome. And I prefer this in my cocktails. If you don't like the real heat of your cocktails and you're not used to overproof or higher proof spirits, it's not the only bourbon I'd recommend. Woodford Reserve have a fantastic range of bourbon. They're great for your Manhattans, for your old fashioned cocktails. Um, it's gonna give this sweet but traditional whiskey flavor uh, that many people come to associate with whiskey. Um, for me, I love my Scotches, I love my Isla. Uh, that is proper whiskey. I even really like Japanese and to some degree Irish, but you can't go wrong with bourbon. And to many people, bourbon, unfortunately, is whiskey. Uh, whereas whiskey to me is Scottish. But it's the world we live in. Grab a bottle of Wild Turkey 101 or any other of those bourbons suggested to make some really delectable cocktails. Try out a port light as well. A tiki cocktail with bourbon works really well with the overproof stuff. If you are a purist and you don't think this is whiskey, well, I've got a bottle for you. This is a bottle of Aberfeldy 16. Great age. And this is a fantastic bottle. Do you need a 16 year scotch for your cocktails? No. Obviously not. You can use a wide array when it comes to mixing in drinks. I'll be honest, I've got this out because I couldn't really find any other scotch, but it's a really good product. I wouldn't recommend this to a home bar. I really enjoy whiskey, so I like to have nice whiskies. If I was just making cocktails and I was starting out again, be honest, I'd buy a bottle of Monkey Shoulder. It's a really nice blended whiskey. It's not the single malt, it's not gonna have the same nuance to it, but if you're mixing it with lemon juice and sugar for your whiskey sours, you're not gonna really have much nuance anyway because it's gonna be taken away 
by the citrus and the sweetness. So use, use a bottle of Lucky Shoulder. It's going to be a lot cheaper. You'll be soon learning whether you actually like whiskey cocktails. And if you do, this will always be here. In terms of some whiskey cocktails that you may make with this or a bottle of Monkey Shoulder or any other blended whiskey that you go for, uh, penicillin is a great shout, although you will need some Isla whiskey, which has got a lot more smoke, just for a little bar spoon on floats on top. Classic whiskey sour, you can't go far wrong. Um, and then obviously some stirred cocktails. You've got the Boulevardier, you've got the Manhattan, of course, um, all work really well, not only with a bourbon, but with a Scottish whiskey too. So give them a go, see what you think. And if you really enjoy them, you can always buy the bougie stuff a little bit later on. A great celebratory bottle. Eight down, four to go, that's eight. Four to go, that's a total two. Four to go, and these are gonna be more modifiers. This, to me, is a great lineup. We've went for the 4-4 four, four formation, uh, and it's a, it's a cracking formation, if I do say so myself. As a line of base spirits, this is the coup de gras. This is a really nice collection of, of friends, we'll call them, all together. I don't know why they're separated. And in the middle, to join the gap between the lights and the darks, we've got the modifiers. Huh. <laughs> this is a bottle of triple sec, which to many of us is just Quadro. It's a little bit like the way Hoover, we all call it Hoover, it's actually a vacuum cleaner. Jacuzzi, another one, it's just a fancy hot tub. Quadro is what we all tend to just use when we mean triple sec. Where am I going with this? I don't really know. What is a triple sec? Triple secs are effective just orange liqueurs. There's many different types of them. If you want one that's uh, a bit richer and a bit deeper in character, you might want to go with a Curacao instead. Uh, they usually got like a, a brandy base or something a bit richer, darker. But for the majority of stirred and shaking cocktails that you'll see, whenever they call for an orange liqueur, they're actually meaning Quantrum. If you want to make margaritas, you're gonna need Quantrum. If you're gonna make a Cosmo, again, Quantrum. If you're going down the Mai Tai route, oh, what are you gonna use again? Yeah, Quantrum. Although I use Curacao because it pairs better with rum, but mm. Quantrum is eclectic. It's used in many different drinks and it's something that, yeah, it, it, it is essential for me. It's something I always have on hand. I really enjoy the spirit. And I've recently got to work with them and they're bloody good guys, to be honest with you. So go and pick up a bottle of Quantro. And gals, actually. Uh, one of them was a woman. And she was lovely too. Yeah, pick up a bottle of Quantro before they get cancelled. Next in the list of essential modifiers, bear in mind we've only got three left, two after this, is a coffee liqueur. Oh! You do need this for your espresso martinis, for your, yeah, just espresso martinis. You need a coffee liqueur. <laughs> People always enjoy your espresso martinis. You can throw it in a white Russian as well. You can throw it in an Irish coffee. You can throw it in a revolver, if that may suit you. The only reason I know those three cocktails is I quite literally did a video on it, which I'll link somewhere. Why have I got a bottle of Kahlua in my hands of all things? Is it the best coffee liqueur on the market? No, but when you see any spec that calls a coffee liqueur 99 times out of 100, especially if it was made over 10 years ago, those cocktails were actually calling for Kahlua. There was a day where Kahlua was as big as Quantro in the triple sec market. Kahlua is the brand when it comes to coffee liqueur. There's some brilliant options there nowadays. Whether it go, whether you go with Mr. Black, whether you go with uh, a tequila based one like Patron Cafe, Mixer 100. Whether you even go for a more vanilla in inspired one, such as uh, Lecha 43, or Galliano, there's some brilliant options on the market when it comes to coffee liqueur. But if you're starting a home bar and you need a bottle of coffee liqueur, you need Kahlua. The reason for that, as I said, is the cocktails are designed towards this. Mr. Black is a bit bitter and it's more for the coffee purist. I love it, but it's not ideal for cocktails. Sometimes you need an extra five ml of simple, agave, whatever syrup, just to get that cocktail balance the way it should be. Although it will taste delicious. It's one extra step that for a basic bar and a home bartender in the beginnings, you don't need to worry about that. Get Kahlua and it's all sorted for you. And I've actually used quite a bit of this. So I, even to this day, I still do throw it in cocktails as it's, it's a workhorse. It's, it's a brilliant product. It's a product. It's an okay product. It's a coffee liqueur. Finally, we've got a bitter ingredient, the Italian's bottle tears of Campari. This is basically a blended pizza. This is as Italian as it gets. And like many of the men on the Mediterranean, red-blooded. This is delicious. Many a time, I will pop into local bars to annoy the bartenders by just ordering a Campari soda. I love them. I never used to, it sort of tastes like earwax, but it's a delicious product when you get used to it. This won't be in everyone's 
hold that. Camp Hardy is quite a decisive spirit. The reason I've chose it for mine, the reason it is being included today is because it shows up too much in some of the biggest classics. The Negroni, the, yeah, the Negroni is arguably the most popular served down, stirred cocktail in existence. It's the only cocktail of that kind that I can think of that has a full week dedicated to it. Unless you count Old Fashioned Week, in which case there's two. But if you don't count Old Fashioned Week, Negroni Week is the biggest stared down served cocktail. So it deserves its place. Campari is also used in a Boulevardier. It's also used in an Americano. Campari soldiers are delicious. You can make a Negroni sour. Uh, it also transcends the classy suit and tie Italians and goes more towards Don or Trader Vic sat on a beach going, oh, what do I fancy today? I fancy a jungle bird. Campari is a fantastic bottle. You will get used to it. If you're not too sure about it, give it a go on a Garibaldi. Look at this, another link to something that we've done before. Give it a go on a Garibaldi, give it a go on a Jungle Bird. The Negroni's gonna be sat waiting for you and eventually you might like them. But David, I hear you're asking, I wanna make a Negroni. I've got a lovely bottle of gin. I've got a lovely bottle of Italian blood and sweat. Do I need anything else? Well, hold your horses and I'll go get the last ingredient. This is a bottle of Carpano Antica Formula, and I'd go as far as saying my favorite bottle of Sweet Vermouth. I have tried quite a few. They can be quite, quite jarring at times, quite bitter more than sweet. They can be a touch herbal, and it's not what I'm looking for in a Sweet Vermouth. The fortified wine flavor's got its own unique type of funk, similar to <laughs> the way the Jamaican rums have their funk. I find some Sweet Vermouth to be less sweet, more vermouth, which is fine. But Carpano Antica Formula has this really gentle vanilla note that runs all the way through it and it passes into the cocktails more importantly. It's not something that's going to get bullied by the Campari. It's not going to be bullied by a brilliant gin. It's going to stand on its own two feet and play really well in not only a Negroni with the Campari but also a Boulevardier. Vermouth and Soda is delicious. Vermouth and Tonic is really nice as well. An Americano is basically just and a groany hold gin and add soda. Vermouth to me is an essential part of the bar, but I am gonna talk about some potential other inclusions as well. How are we looking on that initial 12? Let's have a look. So we've got four lighter base spirits that I think, yeah, with these you can make anything from a mojito to a marg to a clover club. Nice little selection, ignore him. On this side, we've got a couple of whiskies and a couple of rums. That's not a bad basis. Personally, me, I lean towards darker spirits. I may substitute this for another spirit. Swap the vodka, add a brandy, add a cognac. Gives you a few more options with stair drinks, sidecars, especially now you've got a bottle of Quantrill as well. Do you know what? We're gonna swap this out, we don't need vodka. Now it looks a bit more complete. We've got a lovely bottle of cognac from Camu. A really nice, French, fruity, vibrant and fresh cognac, but it's still got those deep notes. Paired with some lemon, a bit of simple and a bit of Quantrill, you've got a delicious sidecar. Add Definitely lean towards that over the vodka. If you want to start basic, if you're making a bar to make your Long Island iced teas, get a bottle of vodka. But in reality, upgrade it, get a nice bottle of cognac, throw in a bottle of mezcal, throw in another bottle of rum, or even an Isla whiskey. And it'll give you a lot more options than the vodka. You can't go much wrong with cognac. In terms of modifiers, I went very classic, admittedly. These four here are gonna be able to make most of the classic cocktails you see. I'd be tempted, just because it's me, to swap out both the Campari and the Vermouth. I really like them, but I like other things more. So my preferred lineup would actually look a little bit like this. Just like that, we've said goodbye and sayonara to the Campari and this sweet Vermouth. And we've got a couple of spirits that are a bit more me. Bottle of green chartreuse, now you can make last words here some Moxado, and you can also use this in your death in the afternoons, in your absinthe fraps, in anything you want really, absinthe's gorgeous. I love absinthe, this bottle from Tempest Fugit is delicious. We've actually spoke about it and you can see me tasting all of my absinthe in this video here. This is a big upgrade for me and yes, maybe not a modifier anymore, but that's only because I use it as a base spirit. In reality, absinthe is a modifier. This is great for a rinse on a corpse reviver, it's great for spritzing on top of a cocktail. This can elevate your drinks to a new level. This is, in many ways, seasoning to cocktails as salt and pepper are to food. All you need to do is spritz this, a little atomizer, or even just a rinse the glass and then neck it. It will be delicious. Absinthe is one of the go-tos for me and is definitely gonna be involved in my top 12. And then we'll do a slight more deep dive, slight little deep dive on the hardest way those Cartusian monks have ever done. I, for one, think it's a great product, but some people might say, lean more into religion, guys, come on. 
why are you sat pissing about me in a 55% liqueur all the time? I'm glad they did. I've actually got a Spanish bottle of green chartreuse because we had some supply issues. So 130 botanicals popped together in a really gorgeous bottle. There's some of the chlorophyll that's come off of the leaves, chlorophyll, not chlorophyll, and this has given it a gorgeous green colour. There's alpine notes. Oh, it was, it's a new bottle. It really is a gorgeous bottle. I said earlier that Havana 3 would be the deathbed bottle. Um, I'm glad I didn't die at that moment because I was wrong. Green chartreuse, of course, is the bottle I will take to the grave. And it might be this one with the supply issues, but yeah, green chartreuse for your last words, for your nuclear daiquiris, for your industry sours, for, now. for the vow of silence, it's my drink. Okay. That is pretty much it for this video. We've swapped out the vodka for a cognac, but from start to finish, from the cognac to the gins, all the way through to Prince Andrew's favourite age, we have got a brilliant lineup. I absolutely love this. This episode, this mini series, is really tailored to that whole bar. Take what I'm saying with an own, just an almighty pinch of salt. Everyone's tasted different. This lineup to me looks fantastic, to be honest, but it might not be ideal for you. If you like your agave spirits, you might decide to drop the cognac for a mezcal. You might drop one of the rums and one of the whiskies for an añejo or a reposado. Go for it. At the end of the day, 12 bottles are all you need to make a huge range of cocktails with some basic syrups and some citrus. This 444 lineup that we've got here, split between lighter, besides the cognac, and darker base spirits, and a few modifiers, it's got a nice balance, um, and it's the right balance for me. Yeah, I've enjoyed this episode. It's been a nice, quick, punchy video hopefully depending on how the edit goes if you are enjoying this little mini series and you're looking forward to the next episode which we think is going to be ice this time hopefully might not be but we're hoping it will be ice then you can always drop a subscription to the channel hit the little bell icon as well because apparently you get notified on your phone and we're all just fiends to that dopamine rush so if you want that dopamine rush and you want to know when i've posted click the bell and you're going to get a notification if you've not got it in you to click that bell icon but you've got maybe three or four calories you want to burn on one more click jump over to instagram have a look at Speakeasy UK and now Bohemian Mixology, where you can see some daily content. Some like this, but let's be honest, not really like this at all. It's more cocktails and it's what you signed up for in the first place, to be honest with you, so don't worry. Next episode will be ice. Hopefully it'll be an absolute storm of a video. It'll probably be short because the ice will melt if it's not. But we'll go into why we use ice, why we stir, why we shake. A little bit more on the methods that we saw last week's video somewhere. But the good thing is, you're building the story. Now you've got your equipment. You sort of how to use it. You've got some bottles. All you need now is a few home syrups, bitters, a little bit of ice, some glassware, and then I'll show you how to make your first original cocktail. And until next time, I'll speak to you very, very soon.